Hey everyone, my name is Afro the Facts, and today we're going to be going over motivation, tactics, and methods to maintain it, and most importantly, the science behind it all. I put a lot of effort into this video, and I promise you if you reach the end, you'll improve your workload. This video will not only help your writing, but in every aspect of life. All writers want motivation. When you first conceive of your book idea, motivation comes easy. When you're outlining the world, you're motivated by a flurry of ideas burning through your brain, you're inspired. We all know that tingling feeling when your brain is lit with ideas. But the problem is this fire eventually fades throughout the design process as you actually get down to the nitty gritties. And when it's done, you stir at a page as blank as your brain. The why. This happens because the process is in your brain that you're not even consciously aware of. The Tryon Brain Model describes the brain as having three distinct regions. The reptilian region. This is the oldest part of our brain controlling vital bodily functions like heart rate, breathing, etc. It also controls our flight and fight reflexes. The mammalian region. This part of the brain controls memories and is responsible for our emotions. Most importantly for this video, it's a seed of value judgments that we make and whether they are worth it. This is the region and the one I'm going to cover the most. The neocortex. This part of the brain is what makes up most of you in terms of a writer. Your personality, language, imagination and consciousness for all comes from this magical place. This is where human intelligence comes from. Let's go back to the example. When you're writing up your ideas, the mammalian region of your brain gauges whether your task is worth it. And at the beginning, it agrees with your passion. You imagine all the money and the fame that's going to come with your amazing idea. You're having fun using your imagination without bounds, coming up with interesting concepts and letting yourself go wild. As this progresses, the immediate burning energy starts to fade. When you finally reach the end of your book, your mammalian region watches that blank page with you. It starts to reconsider things. In your head, you know you have a massive journey ahead of you. Hundreds, maybe even thousands of hours of work between your goal. Your mammalian brain knows it too. The worst part? This part of your brain likes quick rewards with little effort. It starts whispering in your ear. Watch a movie. You've earned it. Check your Snapchat. Why right now when you can just watch Effort Effects on YouTube? <laughs> you tell yourself that you'll come back to your work later and give yourself a little reward. Maybe make it up tomorrow. Most of us never do. It's easy to listen to your lazy mammalian region rather than your neocortex, which consciously knows you're doing something bad. When this happens, it can feel like a fog has covered your brain, putting you in a stupor. Or, well, at least for me anyway. Make no mistakes, this is a battle. When your primitive mammalian brain and higher mental processes pull in different directions, you can stammer yourself with the conflict between doing and retreating. Your primitive mammalian brain and higher mental processes conflict with each other. Your mammalian brain instincts are to follow the path of least resistance. Your reasoning brain understands the value of timely actions and the consequences of delay. Only one view wins the day. Unless you make yourself consciously mindful of this conflict, it's easy to let some deadlines slide. To amend this, you must make a deliberate effort to map this conflict and think it out. Then force yourself to override these primitive impulses whether you feel like it or not. You have a better shot at starting sooner rather than later. Fight for your book. Don't lie down like a large majority of the planet does. You're in control of how much you do. Don't let your primitive instincts make you sit like an idiot and watch endless time-wasting Netflix shows or make you scroll down a vapid Facebook feed. You now know your enemy. It's time to go to war and let's go to the drawing board and write up some tactics to defeat them. The methods and techniques. These will be many you've heard before and I don't care, listen to them all. Don't let your mammalian brain turn this video off, listen and write them down and find the ones that work best for you. First and foremost, don't expect to be motivated. I want to end this toxic mindset. Motivation has recently turned into a dirty word for me. And don't get me wrong, I bloody love motivation. But loving it too much can be your downfall. Some writers only attack their work when they feel like it. The issue here is that feelings can be week apart, weeks apart, even months apart. And with these tactics, your book will never get finished. Don't only write when you're motivated. Write every bloody day. Don't ride temporary waves of inspiration. Go forth with a tank of resolve, a car made out of willpower, or if all else fails, bloody crawl over the battlefield of your mind if you have to. Schedule and rituals. 
Follow a creative ritual or schedule before you start writing. This is the most important thing I can emphasize. Pick a time and a place to write and pick it now. When are you free? For me, after classes, I head to the library and write every single day. I'm writing this script right after class and here's the cool part. I didn't even think about it. I just walked to the library like I do every day after class and I sat down. I just did it. The power of these habits and the rituals is that it provides a mindless way to initiate your behavior. It makes starting your habits easier and it means following through on a consistent basis is easier as well. And here's the awesome part. Eventually this routine becomes so tied into your performance that by simply doing the routine, you're pulled into a mental state that is primed to perform. You don't need to find motivation, inspiration, or even watch a motivational video. You'll just perform. Counting. Here's a method I use if I feel the fog descending upon me. When I feel a stupor happening, I count in multiples of five or a multiple of whatever number you choose. Why? Well, when you're looking at your page and dreading the amount of work you're doing, the pesky mammalian brain starts to whispering. The easiest way to shut him out is to do something he can't do. Count. Your neocortex, the conscious you, is the only part of your brain that can count. So when I feel foggy or I'm about to procrastinate, I turn off my mammalian brain and let my neocortex take the driver's seat. 5, 10, 15, 20. From here you can think clearly. Think about nothing while counting and get your manuscript up and start writing anything that comes easily. How was your day? How do you feel? Even simply describe your room in writing. Use this momentum to transition onto real work. This is my foolproof method and works for me every single time and I cannot say and I cannot push it hard enough. Competition. We all love to win. Have a little competition with a writing partner, friend, or anyone with a firm writing pulse. From here, set a few stakes up, a little wager there, a little Nando's trip there. Oh, and by the way, thanks to the meal, John. I appreciate it, man. I know you're listening. That'll teach you for going against a writing monster like myself. Stomping your friend's soul into the ground and making a buy a delicious, mm, mildly seasoned meal is maybe the best feeling in the world. On top of that, you perform better because of it. These are great motivations. I only have one small caveat to this point. Make sure you're competing with someone equal or equalish to you. If they stomp you hard, you'll feel bad and you'll be crushed. If you destroy someone who just started riding, you're gonna think you're awesome and you're gonna slow down. Try to get someone at about your level. Reasonable goals. Most steady riders use these. I personally don't. I ride as much as I can muster every day. Other riders I know can't live without their goals and I can see why. Their results are spectacular. Goals can put pressure on you so you consistently work towards your goal. Just ensure these are reasonable and achievable within a safe margin. If you go too wild, you'll feel and you'll just get down on yourself even if you did awesome. Rewards. What's success without a little reward? If you don't crazy good for the week, crushing it into the dust, you can go out tonight and get smashed. That's cool. Working for four hours that day and genuinely did your best? Go watch some Netflix. Finish five pages of good work and you've pushed it? grab yourself some chocolate. Reward good behavior, this can help you add a little motivation and make you correlate that within your work and you'll start drilling Pavlovian style. Momentum. I read something on this topic recently and I think it's great so I'm gonna quote it here. Motivation is often the result of action, not the cause. Getting started even in very small ways is a form of active inspiration that naturally produces momentum. They refer to this effect as the physics of productivity and I think it's bloody great because this is basically Newton's first law applied to habit formation. Objects in motion tend to stay in motion. Once a task has begun, it's easier to continue moving it forward. Habit. Following up from the previous point, you must know about habit. There are many disagreements in this realm, but a study from Felipe Lali, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce anything, published a study that stated it takes around 66 days or two months before a new behavior becomes automatic. At the beginning, if you're starting this, you're gonna struggle. Three weeks in, it leads up a little bit. Near the end, you're gonna be absolutely fine. But when you hit that finish line, you're in the clear. You'll appear at the workstation without any prompt. I'm at a level now that I'm in the library without making decisions to do so. When I sit down on my computer, when I'm home, I sit and I write. It's an automatic reaction. I can't even stop myself and it actually makes me work too much. Fight through the early stages and get to the end. I'm telling you, a change in lifestyle and pushing yourself every day will be worth it. You'll hit that magical 66th day and you'll turn into a productivity god. The if-then strategy. I know life's not as clear-cut as this. 
I mean, I'm a writer, you're a writer, everyone knows. Family occasions need attending, houses need cleaning and work needs to be gone to. This is life. Previously, I mentioned tactics on this. Picking a time and a place if you're nearly always free is the beginning. But this can fail if something happens, but when this happens, we use the if-then strategy. For example, if I miss writing at 9am, I'll write after work, no matter how tired I am. If you already have a backup plan in your head, when hiccups happen, you'll still keep your habit. Start now. One of the most surprising things about motivation is that it often comes after starting a new behavior. Listening to me isn't going to help. You've got to start yourself. We all have this common misconception that motivation arrives as a result of passively consuming a motivational video or reading an inspirational book. However, active inspiration can be far more powerful of a motivator. Don't, again, don't listen to this video and be motivated. Get a plan in action and assert that plan today. Go and write today after this video or write tomorrow at a certain time and change your life up. The reason why I'm so passionate in the subject is that I was one of those writers who would procrastinate for huge periods of times and I would sit and watch videos, I would just waste so much time and I love writing so much and I wasn't doing it. And the cool thing is I added habit, I looked into the science of it and I push myself. I count every time I sit at my computer if I don't feel like it but recently I've stopped counting, I don't need to, it's become habit. I'm telling you, if you change this up and you start it now, you will write so many books and you'll make your dream and that's what it's all about. Get motivated, go and assert the plan and you'll be absolutely fine. And that's it for the video, I hope you enjoyed it and maybe even found it helpful. For those of you that haven't wrote today, turn off YouTube and get at it. Videos on writing can only get you so far, but writing yourself is the only thing that will make you into a, a fantastic author in the long run. Anyway, that's it for me. Best luck with the book. Take it easy, guys. I'll catch you next time.